Hey everybody, my name is Paul John, and this is John Mavy. Hi there. And we are here to answer your questions from the Hippo Mailbag. And today we actually have a question from the AAPA Pants Panel Review by Katie. I thought Pika, oh no, Pika. I thought Pika was considered a buzzword for iron deficiency anemia, or is it more often seen in lead poisoning? Yeah. Uh, that's a great question. And uh, I was going to ask you, John, what, what what exactly is Pika again? Pika. Pika is by definition exactly that. Now, you do this on a routine basis, I can tell, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm very, very hungry. <laughs> ah, I can tell. Absolutely. Well, let's take a look at the definition of pica because I think that's a, a key piece uh, to answer part of the question, at least. So this is actually, um, I'm going to re basically refer you to the DSM-5 uh, um, for the, like, the... I guess the real robust definition oh, the of this piece. Yeah. Okay. But let me just highlight some of the pieces. It's actually considered one of the eating disorders, uh, feeding and eating disorders. So basically what it is is, is exactly that. It's folks that eat like non-nutritive or non-food items for uh, by criteria for um, at least a month. Oh, so wow. this was just a three-second ordeal. And <laughs> But we have patients that by definition do this for like a prolonged period of time, right? Wow. So a month wow. by criteria. And basically they um, are eating that kind of stuff beyond an age that's that's developmentally appropriate. So we all know like little kids, maybe yeah, 18 months old. Yeah, they'll chew on things sure, they don't know. Yeah, yeah that, that's a normal so kind of thing. So my kid does. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> but once you pass a certain age, and, and two is kind of like the threshold for that age piece. Two years old, got so it. So yeah, okay. once they start to get older, then that really kind of fits that, that uh, DSM-5 uh, criteria. Johnny, you should know better than to eat pebbles every day. Right? Got it. Right. <laughs> okay. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and the other thing to think about, th though, too, and this is in the DSM-5 criteria, is that you know it's something that also is not, is it, it's out of the realm of what may be expected culturally so there are certain cultures maybe where this okay. practice yeah Fair can enough. be okay but so this is not uh not inclusive of those circumstances okay yeah. and we also see the uh this in um uh, pica syndrome in patients with uh, some other mental disorders frequently are, are uh, like a confounding factors yeah. with that, that we see this sense. probably more frequently in patients with some autism uh underlying autism some sort spectrum of disorder right? yeah i see um, so um, let's talk a little bit about like what are the characteristics of things that people eat, right? Yeah. So I'm this curious. is really all over yeah. the place. So I'm just going to go through a partial list here. Sure. Clay, dirt, sand, stones, hair, feces, lead, starch, plastic, ice, paper, paint chips, chalk, needle string. So a bunch of things that people can ingest. Yeah, chalk would be so much better than feces. Right, you would think. <laughs> I might have choose. <laughs> maybe a little, maybe a little pika hot sauce like, would help with that. I'm not really yeah, sure. That's right. So we quake. see this, right? We see this more commonly in kids, like in the two to three uh, age uh, age range, and also okay. in, in folks with. Um, underlying devel developmental disabilities. Okay. But we do see over the course of time that the the, ins the prevalence basically decreases with increasing age. So a lot of people as they get older, okay. you know, they grow out of this. If patients do continue though, we're having pica, oftentimes we see that in patients with some underlying uh, other kind of condition. What about like pregnant people? I yeah, think interestingly enough. Too. Yeah, so we see pa uh, patients, we see a number of patients that are pregnant that also develop this pica syndrome and eating ice is kind of characteristic yeah. of, of that piece. Mo and most of the time, or for most patients, that's a transient phenomenon. I see. So once, once the, the pregnancy, pregnancy yeah, as we saw, that, that seems okay. to go away. But the underlying cause of that, the mechanism is pretty unclear. Really, really, yeah. what, what causes that? So, what's the whole deal between that and like lead poisoning and iron deficiency? Yeah, so nobody really knows. One of the thoughts that's out there is that pica may be reflective of some underlying nutritional deficit. Okay. So maybe some iron deficiency, zinc. So there's a few minerals, maybe some vitamins uh -huh. that might um, be associated with that. Oftentimes, we see this. So back to the question: Is yeah. when do we see something like? this we uh -huh. might see this in the context of someone with an iron deficiency so someone okay. with an iron deficiency anemia for example would, would be uh, you know maybe would fit this uh, clinical kind of picture I see. but the associate when you take a look at the literature the data is very sparse it's not really okay. hard with respect to that but that might be one of the circumstances so it's an association there's for whatever reason unknown reasons there's an association between pica and iron deficiency exactly anemia. exactly Got red flag Got right it. so that's um, the one piece the other thing that we see that's classic though is a uh, lead poisoning so okay. kind of getting back to the question so classic circumstances that we see associated with this with respect to um, uh, pica syndrome is one of lead uh, intoxication or lead poisoning and then maybe some underlying uh, iron deficiency is it because there are like kids eating paint chips and just exactly yeah, exactly so okay. um, and the other thing that uh, people can eat too is like uh, like stuff like stones gravel you know uh, seed pits out of uh, fruit so we get this oh, concept wow. of bezoars remember bezoars? <laughs> yeah you have bezoars so hairballs yeah, yeah, hair right? <laughs> so these can also Human you know of course cause mechanical obstruction right you can get a bowel obstruction from that perforation yeah. so the signs and symptoms that patients really get are 
are a consequence of what's ingested. So I see. there aren't any real clear uh, um, um, like signs and symptoms that, that patients get because it's really a function of, of what they ingest. So with respect to um, the for pants and panry, then what uh -huh. we want to look for is that. You, of course, want to know about the PICA syndrome. Yeah. And the common buzzwords, like the question alluded to, was uh, 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 associations with iron and then uh, lead poisoning. I so see. oftentimes a test item that gets written in this circumstance is going to be a, like a clinical vignette item. Makes so sense. you just want to make sure that you read the question looking for particular items. So, for example, if you're given a child who lives in an older home that's eating lead Got or it. you know paint chips, that, of course, is going to lead you yeah. down that They'll particular... They'll say, what, what do you order? You should probably get a lead level exactly. or like a CBC to check exactly. for iron efficiency right. anemia, right. things like that. Yeah. Cool. So that's basically the, the gist. So the key words... Um, as was alluded to in the question, lead and uh, iron deficiency are two kind of common things you may be asked about. And then Bs are like these funny odd items uh, that you want to be aware of as well. I see. So that whole theory, though, about nutritional deficiency, that's not proven. That's it's just not a, proven. a theory or a yeah. thought. Yeah. I was going to say, because uh, I don't know if eating random stuff just to fulfill that zinc or iron deficiency. Exactly. I mean, just eat cereal, man. Right. Right. <laughs> like take your multivitamins. Good to go. <laughs> there you go. All right. Thanks All right. so much, Katie. Uh, hopefully we answer your question. We'll see you next time. Send your questions over to the Hippo Mailbag, and we will answer them. All right. All right. Thanks. Good deal.